Okay, so we love this time of the year, right? I love the carols in the shopping. It's just like jingle bells, jingle. you know, it's just, it's fun, it's joyful. Um, I love the Christmas trees. I don't know what it means, but, you know, all those kind of things. And I love sharing presents and family. I think that's my biggest thing is to have the family around. And um, Derek and I can't be with family this year, but we are with family. And I just want to say thank you to you all, Citygate. You are a family. And um, I was thinking today, we've only been in this church for two years. I know. <laughs> But um, it feels like forever, and um, this year has been a great year, and we've made some incredible friends, and um, really, we don't just call you friends, we call you family, so thank you very much for that, um, and from our family, and I'm sure from all the elders and the leaders, a very merry, happy Christmas, and um, a good, happy, abundant New Year, okay, did I do that right? Okay, thank you. Okay, so the birth of Jesus is not a normal story. Do you agree? Okay, so when Jesus was born, it wasn't um, like any other baby being born. I'm, I'm not talking about, I've got friends who've been in labor for hours and it's a whole story. I'm not talking about those kind of things. I'm talking about the birth of Jesus was not normal. Anyone agree? The, the birth of Jesus was definitely also not boring. Hey? Why do I say that? Because Jesus was born when? Anyone know? When was Jesus born? How, how long ago? 2,000 years ago. What did Elijah say? Elijah, I missed that. You got that wrong. Okay, don't worry. This is a family church. You feel safe. Okay. Okay, so <laughs> almost, almost there. So we don't actually know the date, so you're not wrong. Okay, but um, Jesus was born about 2,000 years ago, okay? Now, who else do you know who was born 2,000 years ago whose birthday we still celebrate today? No. So is this a normal birth, not a chance, okay? So not, not, not only that, when Jesus was born, get this, we follow the calendar according to that. No ways. And even if you're a believer or not a believer, it doesn't matter who you are, um, just put that first line up there um, of the picture. We know that there was a child born. So this, I don't know if you've seen this. This is a picture. They made this, the municipality. And um, I, I think it's quite excellent. But it says, if you can read there, for unto us a child is born. So it doesn't matter who drives past there. Everyone knows a child was born 2,000 years ago. And last week, if you were here, we were talking about who is this child? Do you remember? So for those of you, welcome. If you're new here today, um, we hope you enjoy it with us. So just a quick recap of what we said last year. We looked at the book of John 1 verse 1, and we said there's five things. Was it five? Yes, five. And today we're going to add another one. There's five things about who is this child. And we said this child was before time. In other words, kids, if you think of Jesus when he was born, that was not the first time he came into existence. Okay? Now you must go like, what? Or you must go like, yeah, I know that. Hey? Lydia knew that. Okay? So Jesus was there in the beginning when God created heaven and earth. And it's not like God created in them. He already existed. Okay? So for us to know this child that we're all celebrating was before time. Number two, this child is the Word. Okay? We explained that last week, the Word of God. This child in a manger who we are all celebrating is God. Now that's a big one. Okay? When we read John 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Okay? In other words, if we don't believe that little sentence there, and the Jehovah Witnesses say that differently, they say it's not like that, then we can't believe anything in this word. Okay? Because Jesus, who was born in a manger, is God. Then the fourth one, if I'm still on the right track, the fourth one, this child is the creator of heaven and earth. Thanks, Elijah. I think you are getting your presents after this, or something is making you very excited. Okay, so um, that, 
baby boy who was born in a manger is the creator of heaven and earth. In other words, the very star that led the wise men to this little child was created by that little child. Okay? In other words, when we talk about a little child born to us in a manger, it's not just a little baby, right? You get that? Okay, and the last one we said last week, this little baby is life. Wow, we cannot have life without Jesus, that little child that was born to us 2,000 years ago. Okay, so you're all still with me? We've all catched up, right? Okay, so I say this is not a normal story of a birth. Why do I say that? The first place is that this child was born, and before he was born, there was about No, no, not about. More than 300. That's a lot. Can you count all there, Alex? 300? No, not yet. Okay, so that's a lot. 300. There was more than 300 prophecies. Now, what is prophecies? Saying things about this child before he was born, about who he's going to be, what he's going to do, and what's going to happen. 300 prophecies. Now, I don't know who of you, I, I did maths at school, but I don't think I learned this. Who of you have heard of the signs of probability? Anyone? Ooh, great. I see some hands. There's some high school peeps here. The signs of probability says, what is the chance of an event happening that someone said it will happen? Does it make sense? Am I saying it right, Derek? Okay. So, the chance of something happening. So, there was this very smart professor and his students, and they worked it out. What is the chance of Micah, in Micah 5, verse 2, that's a book in the Bible, who said that Jesus was going to be born in Bethlehem? What is the chance? What is the probability of that happening? Okay? So, he's saying this Savior of the world is going to be born in, very specific way, Bethlehem. Okay? What's the probability? They worked it out. One in 300,000. I don't know if you'll bet on that, if you had to bet. Hey? That's, a, oh, that's a thin chance. Okay, but it gets better than that. Then they said, okay, that's only one prophecy, right? What if there was eight prophecies? Now, remember, there's more than 300. But they took eight prophecies. They said, what is the chance that you will get it right if you prophesied eight different things and eight different people about the same person? What is the chance? Now get this, the chance is this. Who's been to Texas in America? Oh, there's one, well done. Two, there's two people in that. Three, one more, one more, one. No, I'm joking, okay. So the chance is that if you go to Texas and you fill them with coins, the whole Texas, 60 centimeters deep. Now, hello, that's big. Texas is half the size of South Africa, about. I don't want to get in trouble. (laughs) Okay, if you fill Texas with coins to 60 centimeters deep and you put on one of those coins a mark and you said to a blind man, what is the chance that you will pick that one coin? That is the probability. Are you getting this? That is the probability of eight prophecies happening. That is the chance of something that people say happening. And what happened? It happened. So this is not a normal story. Jesus' birth, there were 10 prophecies in the Old Testament about him coming, where he was going to be born of a virgin Mary, all those things. This is not a normal story. Do you agree with me? This is not something normal that we are celebrating. This is something supernatural. And then I'm not even talking about the fact that Mary conceived without being with a man, that the wise man followed a star, They knew that star meant Jesus, and they followed. That a lot of angels appeared to the wise, not the wise men, maybe, who knows, to the shepherds and were singing, glory to the Lord, I wanted to be there. (laughs) And God giving Joseph and the wise men dreams about where they should go because Herod wanted to kill Jesus, right? So this is not a normal story. In fact, if you read it to your children, you can really go wild. It's better than a war, Star Wars, what are those, you know? And this is a real story. And this happened 2,000 years ago. And I want to tell you three things this afternoon. I know it's hot in here. Just wave someone and say you're going to be okay. Just wave them. 
So you're going to be okay. I want to add the sixth thing about who this child is, and that is he is the light of the world. So for this Christmas, I want you to know that Jesus Christ, the child that was in the manger, is the light of the world. And I want to explain that or, or, or just highlight three things about that to you today. Um, maybe let me just quickly read this. This is what Jesus says in John 8 verse 12. He says, again, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of of life. So what, was, what does this mean? And what does it mean for us this evening, Christmas Eve? The first thing is this. Jesus is the only light. When he says, I am the light of this world, there is no other light except Jesus in this world. Now that is very important because what, what, what does light do? It shows us what's going on, right? It shows us where to go. And these days, we want to follow a lot of different lights. But Jesus is saying, I am the light of the world. And if you don't know the light, all you know is darkness. And if all you know is darkness, you have no need for a, a light. And that brings us to the second point. So the first one is Jesus is the only light. Wait, let me just read scripture. Otherwise, maybe I forget. I have come into the world. This is John 12, 46. I have come into the world as light so that whoever believes in me may not remain in darkness. In other words, if we do not believe in Jesus, who is the light, where do we remain? In darkness. Revelations 21 verse 23, now this is phenomenal because we need to know that not only, okay, let me explain it like this, now in this time we are in a dark world, right? Anyone agree with me? Okay, it's a dark world, there's stuff happening, we don't want to happen. But one day Jesus is coming back, having conquered everything. This is what's happening in Revelation 21 verse 23. It says, And the city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives it light, and its lamb is, oh, sorry, the lamb is the lamb. B, b. The lamb is the lamb, Jesus. So Jesus is the light of the world, and one day he will be the only light. We don't need sun, stars. I was just thinking about this. Jesus is not like Eskom. Okay, so when ESCOM doesn't work, there's other lights that work. No, 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 Jesus is the only light. Okay, number two, Jesus exposes the darkness. Okay, so what do we need to know about Jesus being the light of the world? He is the only light, and two, he exposes the darkness. Okay, my mom used to say the following. She said, donker mark on kant. Any Afrikaans people in the house? Donker mag aan kant. So what does that mean? That means that if it's dark in a room or in a house, it looks better. You don't see the dirt. You know, it, um, I, I think my sister used to close the curtains, so then it doesn't look so uh, messy, you know, when my mom had to come and check. But when you open that curtains and the light shines into the room, you can see, oh, my hat, this room hasn't been cleaned for a while. Okay? So what am I getting at? So if it's dark... We don't see the mess. But when the light shines on there, what do we see? We see the mess. And that is the same with Jesus. He exposes darkness in us and in our hearts. Okay, so um, another example is Derek and I have been painting this week. Okay, he's stiff. He did much more of the work than I did. But the thing is, when it gets dark, I'm like, have we painted here? I can't really see. I don't know where I'm painting. Do you get that? Ever been in that same situation? I'm like, maybe it's stripes. Maybe I'm painting something double. But as soon as I get the light on there, I can see. And some of us in our lives, we, we get to that place where we are painting, but it's dark. So we don't really know what we are doing. And when we read John, he says, some of us have chosen not to allow the light in our lives. And some of us think that when we allow the light to come and shine in our lives, we're going to be like, oh, no, I'm too bad. Oh, no, no, Jesus is just going to tell me how bad I am. Some thought of that. Have you sometimes thought of that? No, 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 I don't want to come into the light. What if Jesus just shows me how bad I am? But I want to tell you today 
that that is actually a very good thing. Just think about it like this. If you have cancer in your body now, if I get this wrong, Albert, please help me. You want to detect it very early so that you can treat it, right? So what do we do when there's sin in our life? Don't you want to get it detected early? You know, that's what Jesus came to do. He says, I want to show you what's going on. So if you don't see the darkness, what then? You have no need for light. So when the light comes, you have no need for a savior. If you don't see the mess in the room, you have no need for a light. You have no need to clean it. But when the light comes, it exposes the mess. And you're like, oh, my hat, I should probably clean this room. Things are going to start growing here. Okay, and the same in us. We need the light to shine on us. Not to come and say, you bad thing. No, 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 no. But for us to experience life to experience the life, to see what we need, to see what we can have in a Savior who is light. But some of us tend to dwell in that darkness, and we get very comfortable there, and we get our eyes, how can you say, adjust to it, and we live in the darkness. And what I've seen in my years, and I'm not that old, hey, under 30, Um, so in my years what I've seen is that the closer I get to Jesus, the more I see how broken and how sinful I am. And that is not a bad thing because then I just want him more. I am more in awe of him. I am I just want to be closer to him. It's not like I'm, oh, now I'm so bad. No, no, it's like, oh my hat, I see who I am. So I really need him and his great grace and his goodness. Okay, I'm just going to read two verses. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. I'm going to just tell you one more story. There was this boy and he was on a hiking trip. Okay, kids, I don't know if you've heard the story before, but it started to get dark. Okay, and he was hungry and he had an apple with him. Okay, so when you're hungry, an apple tastes very nice. I don't like apples, but when I'm hungry, an apple really tastes nice. So he took a bite out of this apple, right? And what happened? It was rotten. I wanted to say fraught, okay? It was rotten. There were, there were actually some worms in the apple. So he just took a bite, and it was rotten, and there was worms in this apple. So he's like, oh, no, I can't eat this thing. Put it away. But it started to, to, to get dark. And it gets so, got so dark that he couldn't see anymore. And he was just sitting here in his shelter. And what happened is that he was so hungry. He took his apple and he was like, oh, well, it's just the apple. And he started eating the whole apple. Now, I remember as a little child going, no, what did he do? But the whole point of the story is this. Sometimes when things are dark, we don't see the rottenness anymore. We don't see the worms anymore. And some of us like to stay in that dark place because then we can just be filled with the rottenness and the worms and the things. But when it comes into the light, we're like, oh no, look at this. How can I be eating this? Surely there's a healthy, good apple. Does it make sense? Does, do you get this? That when we get into the light, <laughs> Elijah, I'm going to ask you to tell me that same story later just to see if you listened, Okay. Okay, (laughs) he's got to ask someone to tell him that now. Okay, so the third point, Jesus overcame the darkness. The first point was Jesus is the only light. The second point is Jesus exposes the darkness. That's an amazing thing because then we run to him. And the third thing is Jesus overcame the darkness. And I think when I say that, we must go like, yeah. You know, John 16 verse 33 says, I have said these things to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. But take heart, I have overcome the world. And I think I want to leave this word with us today. I don't know, maybe 2023, 2022 wasn't for us, some of of us, the easiest years. My English just ran out. Some of us are looking around us and we're always seeing is darkness. We're seeing what is happening to this world. 
maybe looking to ourselves and we're like, what is this darkness in us? Or just what is the darkness I see in my school, in my family? And what is this things that are happening that, is, that I don't like? And God said that, Jesus said, that in this world you will have tribulations. In other words, it's not like those darkness are going to disappear. You know, it's not like um, we, now when we become Christians, it's like, oh, it's just light. And it's just amazing. And, and we have no troubles. No, you know, when we read Psalm 23, it says, even though I walk through the, sh- through the valley of the shadow of death, even when I walk through it. But the whole point, and Derek pointed that out to me the other day, is that we walk through it. It doesn't matter how dark it is, there's always light doesn't matter how dark it is, Jesus is the light. doesn't matter how dark it is here now, Jesus remains the light. And we, have all, we always have the opportunity to run to the light. We always have the opportunity to allow the light to shine in. doesn't matter how dark it is now, that we can know that He has overcome the darkness. And in eternity, there's no way the darkness can stand against His light. And for us to know today that it doesn't matter what I'm experiencing in this life. It doesn't matter the darkness that I'm walking through. That I can know that there's a light. His name is Jesus Christ. That in Him is life and in Him is light. And darkness cannot stand against Him. Now that is very good in two things today. Is that Jesus is always the light within you. It doesn't matter the darkness. And I want to challenge you. Next time you walk into a dark situation or your work... Walk in there and be like, I am the light. Why? Because Jesus Christ is in me. And I want to tell you that things cannot stay the same if you walk in there carrying the light. It cannot. In fact, darkness will be exposed. How you walk in that light, darkness will be exposed. And some of you are like, oh, you don't know my family. You don't know what's going on. But I want to tell you today that trust in Jesus and trust in this light to come and shine in ways in your family where people start to be like, why can't I talk about these things around you anymore? Because darkness, they are exposed when you are around. And I want to tell you that 2023 is going to be a great year. And it's not going to be a great year because we're going to have all our dreams and promises fulfilled and all of that, it's going to be a great year because we're going to see a Savior like we've never seen Him before, the great light, the light of the world. And we are going to trust in this light. And because we trust in this light and walk with this light, we are going to see things that we've never seen before. And Siggy, the Lord is just saying to me that you are going to touch people and they're going to be healed. And Father, we thank you for that. And this is what's going to happen. Because we're going to trust in our Savior, the light in us, we're going to walk into dark places and it's not going to be the same here anymore. And God has this in store for us. So I want to leave that today with you. This child in the manger, Jesus Christ, he is the light of the world and there's three things. He is the only light. Okay? The second point is he Anyone can remember the second point? That was such a good moment. Jesus exposes the darkness. He's the only light. He exposes the darkness. And Jesus overcame the darkness. Okay, shall we close our eyes and pray? Father, thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Thank you, Lord, that we can celebrate you today. That we can say thank you, Jesus, for coming. So that we can have life and life in abundance. And thank you, Lord, for those of us here today that have never allowed, that never said, I believe in Jesus, and allowed that light to come and shine in our hearts. That today, Father, we can say, Lord, come and shine. Come and shine in our heart. And for those, Lord, who is walking in fear and depression and deep darkness, I thank you, Lord, that in this moment we can ask you to bring that light. Because in your light there's hope and there's peace that surpasses all understanding. So, Father, I pray. I pray for those who are going through deep, deep valleys, Father, of darkness. I thank you for your light that shines. And I thank you, Lord, that your light has always been with them. And I ask, Father, for eyes to open and for hearts to open to receive that light, to allow the light to shine. And we thank you, Father. We thank you for the season. We thank you for family. Lord, lead us around the Christmas table. Lord, lead us in our conversations, Lord. And I pray, Father, that your light will be visible 
in the next two days that people will see your light for your kingdom and for your glory in Jesus' name. And all God's people say, Amen, amen and amen.